Example 3. A person deposits $300 at the end of each month for 15 years into an RRSP, earning 7.8% compounded monthly. This means Registered Retirement Savings Plan. No further deposits are made to the account, and it continues to earn interest at 7.8% compounded monthly for another 15 years when the person retires. Upon retirement, the RRSP is converted to an RRIF with quarterly withdrawals for 20 years. RRIF stands for Registered Retirement Income Fund. Now, a, a retirement savings plan is used to generate income for the retiree. Determine the size of each of the quarterly withdrawal if the RRIF, the Retirement Income Fund, earns 6.6% .6 compounded quarterly. This problem has several components to it, so we have to be very careful here with how we break it down into smaller segments. We've got deposits of $300 at the end of every month for 15 years, and the interest earning on that account is 7.8% compounded monthly. Well, monthly deposits for 15 years is 15 times 12. That amounts to 180 monthly deposits of $300. So let's show that on our timeline here. We've got monthly deposits 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 180 monthly deposits of $300 at the end of every month for the first 15 years. So 300 deposits, there's our annuity. Deposits are made at the end of every month. So N is equal to 180 deposits. There are no further deposits made for another 30, 15 years. So 15 years plus another 15 years will take us to the 30-year time period. So no deposits are made in that, that second 15-year time period. At that point, then what happens upon retirement, so let's just say that they're going to retire here, so the big R, big retirement, um, they're going to be making regular quarterly withdrawals for 20 years. So now I think what's important to note here is that we're going to be making quarterly withdrawals, not monthly withdrawals, but quarterly withdrawals for 20 years. So for the last 20 years, we're going to have how many quarterly withdrawals? Well, 20 times 4 each year is going to be a total of 80 quarterly withdrawals, and we don't know what the size of each draw is. So we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 80 quarterly draws of R dollars. So at the end of each quarterly period, we're going to withdraw R dollars at the end of every quarterly period. So we've got N is equal to 80 payments. The interest rate also changes for that last 20-year period. The interest rate is 6.6% .6 compounded quarterly. So we've got 6.6% compounded quarterly for the last 20-year uh, period, and we have a consistent rate of 7.8% compounded monthly for the first 30 years. So I think we've got the time diagram uh, filled in with as much information as we can. Now we have to figure out how we're going to solve this problem. The time diagram is pretty complete, except that it's missing one important element, and the item that it's missing is a selection of a focal date. We need to know where to locate our focal date. Now, let's take a look here. We, we need to determine the size of the quarterly withdrawal here uh, for the last 20-year period, but we, in order to do that, we need to know how much is in the account to draw from. So perhaps what we should do is figure out what the value is of all of the deposits at the time of retirement. So perhaps what that does is that leads us to determining that our focal date really should be right here at the 30-year time period. So I'm going to mark that as focal date. FD for focal date. What I need to do now is to determine, if that's going to be my focal date, I need to determine how much is going to be in that account uh, after the 30-year time period. So I think I'm going to break this up into a couple of pro steps, a few steps. The first step is going to be to find the final value of the deposits, the 180 deposits. So find the final value of the 180 deposits first, and then you'll notice that we don't make any more deposits for the next 15 years, and what we need to do is to
to add compound interest to that. So we're going to find the maturity value of that, uh, that, that future value of that annuity. So that's going to be step two. Step two is going to be to add compound interest to that for 15 years. Now, that step two value is going to represent the front end value or the present value of the annuity. That's what we're going to draw down from. So the present value is going to end up being the uh, future value of the deposits. So the present value of the withdrawals becomes the future value of all of the deposits. So let's start working on these steps. So with step one, we need to determine the future value of the $300 deposits. And $300 deposits are earning interest at 7.8% compounded monthly. That translates to 0.078 divided by 12, or 0.0065 per month. That's 0.65% per month. So when I substitute that into my annuity formula, I'm going to be working with future value is equal to $300 per month multiplied by the final value factor of 1.0065 per month, 180 monthly deposits, subtract 1, divided by 0 0.0065. Multiplying that annuity factor by $300 per month gives me a future value of 101991 $101, Now, let's place that on the time diagram where it belongs. We've got 101000 $991.55 at year 15. So that would mean 101K right here at that 15 year time period. Now, it's important to note that we don't make any further deposits for the next 15 years, but that money certainly does not sit in the account not earning any interest. It's going to earn interest for the next 15 years at the same rate of 7.8% compounded monthly. So now we don't have an annuity any longer. We simply have a compound interest problem. So the, the maturity value 15 years after that is going to be determined using the formula S is equal to P multiplied by the compound interest factor, 1 plus I to the exponent N, where S is equal to the principal of 101. $1,991.55 multiplied by 1.0065 raised to the exponent 180 because there's a 180 interest periods in the 15 years. So when we work that out on your calculators, you'll end up with a maturity value at the end of the 30th year of 327,327. 374 and 20 cents. So at year 20, uh, year, sorry, year 30, at year 30 or after 30 years, we will have $327,000. That means that the $101,000 has tripled in value over the next 15 years without any further deposits. It's gone from $101,000 to $327,000. So what do we do with that information? Well, that's going to get us started on step three. That $327,000 represents the value at year 30, and it also is the amount of money that we have saved up over the first 30 years. That's going to become the present value of our withdrawals over our registered retirement income fund. So now we switch to using the present value formula, and we use this to solve for the actual size of the withdrawal. So we've got 300 and and $327,374.20 is equal to the payment size per quarter multiplied by the present value factor, one minus. Now the interest rate is going to be 6.6% .6 compounded quarterly. When we divide 0 0.066 divided by four, we'll end up with 1.65% per quarter. So we've got one minus 1.01 .01 six five per quarter and we've got 80 quarterly withdrawals so it's going to be negative 80 80 payments divided by 0 0.0165 per quarter and so when we work this out solve this equation for payment size we'll uh, we'll be able to to um, solve for the uh, quarterly withdrawal so the annuity factor works out to be 44.2407 we're going to again store that annuity factor in memory one store it in memory one and divide the 
$327,000 by the contents of your memory, and you'll end up with a payment size that is equal to 7399 7399.84 cents. So the month the quarterly, the quarterly withdrawal is going to be 7399.84. So let's put down uh, our conclusion here. The quarterly payment is going to be equal to 7399.84. So keep in mind from the very beginning now, we've made monthly deposits of $300 for 15, 15 years. And uh, after a 30 year time period, we can now withdraw $7,399, almost $7,400 on a quarterly basis for the next 20 years, assuming that those rates are in place for that time period.